So I'm at the community garden in Sackville, New Brunswick today. It's the beginning of May and we're going to talk just about how to plan out what you're going to plant in your community garden plot. So now what you want to do is draw a site diagram and I can make this available to community garden members. It's basically just a gridded off space. So a bed is four feet by 16 feet and this has just been gridded off into those cubes. So if you look online uh, or at the library at Square Foot Gardening, that's actually a really great starting guide to spacing. So it lays out all the different common vegetables that people grow and it lists them off by how many will fit in a square foot. It's an estimation. Nature is always going to always going to be a little bit differently and also things are going to grow differently every year, but it gives you a really good guideline for starting to plan your plot. So Make a list of these crops you're going to grow and then find out how many square feet they're each going to take and then try and start to figure out how many of them you can fit in your bed. Another important thing to look at in your crop plan is what direction is south. This is due south, so to the left hand side if I'm facing Charles Street. That's where the most sun exposure is going to be, so the south side of your garden plot is going to get more sun than the north side. I mean they're both in pretty much full sun, but you just want to think about that uh, when you're planning if you're going to put any trellises in. So if I was to put a trellis at the north side of my plot, that's not going to be shading anything. The sun's going to move over across the sky to the south and the north side is going to create shade, but it's creating shade on the path. So that's all right. Whereas if I put a trellis in the middle of the bed, that's actually a nice idea because what that does is it does create shade on this side of the bed, but that's a good spot for things that like a little bit more of a uh, cooler environment. And then in front of that, that's going to be the full sun area. So those are the tomatoes, the cucumbers, the zucchinis, the things that really like full sun, a lot of heat. And it does get very hot here in the summer sometimes, so it's important to take that into consideration and if you want to grow greens without them bolting right away um, creating those those areas with shade can be a good way to do it. So we're at the beginning of May right now. Uh, the daffodils are in bloom, the forsythias are in bloom, the tulips are about to come out. This is a good time to start planting cold hardy seeds. So things like peas, radishes, uh, spinach, lettuce greens, uh, kale, any brassicas, those things can be planted from seed in the ground now. Other plants that you're going to grow from transplants that are the heat loving plants, those like tomatoes, cucumbers, they're going to want to wait until we've definitely had no frosts in the evening. So that's probably safely going to be the beginning of June. You can start keeping an eye on the weather forecast, seeing what those nighttime temperatures are, but you want those to be consistently nighttime temperatures 10 and above before you put tomatoes outside especially since this is a community garden plot and it's a little bit harder to run down here if there's a nighttime low that's pretty cold forecast. You don't want to have to be coming across town to cover your tomatoes and then coming to uncover them in the morning. It's easier if you just wait until it's free and clear. At that point you can also plant some other seeds like beans that uh, need the soil to be a little bit warmer to germinate. Cucumbers and zucchinis and squash, they can be direct seeded right in the soil. You don't need to grow them from transplants. So hopefully this gave you some ideas about how to plan your community garden plot. And if you have any questions, just talk to folks who are down here.